Well, hello and good afternoon everyone. Since you're not around, we'll proceed with our discussion. It is all about centroid of a plane area. Well, I guess you have known already the principles and all the methods in finding an area of a certain region bounded by, uh, let's say for example, the limits x equals to a, x is equals to b, and the x-axis. Now, we will be discussing a special topic which focuses on finding uh, the centroid or the center of gravity of our area. So, know that we have our center of gravity, it is always situated at the center okay, of a certain area. In an irregularly shaped area like this one, how can we find its center of gravity? Or how can we find the centroid? We will use calculus. Okay? So, in this figure, Notice that our area is an irregularly shaped object and it's situated at the origin. So as you can see, we have our Cartesian coordinate x and y axis. Our centroid is basically at the center also at our origin. Now we have also figure 2. We have our irregularly shaped object that is tangent or x and y axis. We have this one, x and y axis. Uh, most cases, our center of gravity will not coincide with our origin because our figure is situated now at the upper uh, or let's just say the uh, first quadrant in our Cartesian coordinate. So therefore, our center of gravity or our centroid is no longer uh, coinciding with the origin. That is why this is the moment that we will try to find out the center or the location of the center of our center of gravity. So as you can see this figure 2, the center of gravity with the area lying on the coordinate axis. This is now the position. And our task is to solve, to find the value of the position of the x and y coordinate of our center of gravity. Now if you look at here, uh, our a regular shaped object is now situated away from our origin and the x and y axis. So as you can see, we still have our uh, center of gravity, CG. Okay? And this is the centroid, the location of our center of gravity. The, uh, the location of our center of gravity to the bottom of our figure is known to us as y. Okay? The distance from this point to here is bar y. And from this center of gravity also to the leftmost part of our figure is the bar x. Since we are still part of the Cartesian coordinate system, we have our x and y axis, we will be locating this one or locating the center of gravity with reference to our origin right here. So if this is our origin, this is the center of this figure. So maybe there are some values right here, y and x, that would immediately pinpoint the original position of this one. Does it mean that if we found the center of gravity of this figure or we found the centroid, it means that it's already the position. Why? Because it is not lying in the x and y component. This time, it is situated away or far from the origin. So basically, there are still areas or there are still distances that we need to find out in order to have the position of our center of gravity at that specific region. So we will be using calculus in finding the value of the center of gravity. Okay, now what we have right here, we have an irregular shaped object that is divided into many areas, area 1, area 2, area 3, up to area 9. We discussed this one already, that if we have different areas, all we need to do is to add all the areas to have the total area. Now, since our focus is all about center of our plane area or the center of our plane area, it is commonly solved by this formula. The total area, the whole area, that's what we have right here, times the bar x, or that is the coordinates of our centroid, is equivalent to the area 1 and its distance x, area 2 times its distance x, area 3 and its distance x, and 
so on and so forth. That is just for finding the bar X. Okay? When we say bar X, what is that? That is the abscissa. Okay? The X value of the center of the total area. If we have the total area, AT, this is the center of gravity or this is the centroid. We have what we call as bar X. Okay? And we have what we call as bar Bar X. Bar X. And bar Y. This is the origin. Okay? From the centroid to the origin, it is bar X. You, we will count X uh, from left to right, or from right, le uh, from right to left, diba? And we will count Y from bottom to top, or top to bottom. So, one is siya ang value from the centroid to the origin, bar X. And one po niya ang value bar Y from the centroid to the origin. Okay? So, we have also... The total area times bar y is now equivalent to area 1 times y, area 2 times y, area 3 times y, and so on and so forth. Okay, using or applying calculus, we will be omitting the plus sign because we are going to use integration. This is now our simplified formula using calculus in this specific topic. The total area that what we have right here times the bar x is the integral of a differential area times the x. Instead of area 1, area 2, area 3, we will be using a differential area. And we have all the basic value of x. Okay? Now, for the other, for the coordinate, coordinate axis, the total area times bar y is equivalent to the integral of the differential area instead of writing a1 to an times the y in order for us to find the values of bar x and bar y. The important factors in order to find the centroid, bar x and bar y. Okay, so apart from using integration, we've known already that we will be having two orientations. Especially in finding our centroid, we will be having two differential strips. It could either be in vertical and it could either be in horizontal. Let's focus first on the vertical strip. Okay, so you can see we have our vertical strip right here. And we have the following values already known from the area. We have the dA, we have the y as the height, and the dx as the length. Okay, so for the particular use, uh, from the formula that what we have discussed already, we know of the area times the bar x is the integral of the dA times dx, since we're talking about x. Okay? What is our dA? We now have our dA, y times dx. So y times dx times another value of x. Where can we see this x? If you look at here, this is our centroid. It is at the center of our differential strip hoping that it is located at the center of our differential strip. The value from the center of the differential strip to the y-axis or to the origin is called the x. So that is why we have the x right here. Okay, notice that we have two different uh, variables, x and y. And look at our differential value, which is in terms of x. Make sure that we will try to substitute for the value of y so that we can integrate. Diba? So, to convert what is the value of y, y is just f of x. So, as we have right here, x times y dx, the value of y is f of x. We know of our formula, x times f of x times dx. That is just for the value of the integral part. We have also uh, to find the value of the area. As a maninga area, this area has been already discussed in our previous topic, all about areas. So still, we will use integration in solving the area. This is part already of our previous discussion, times the bar x. So all we need to do is divide both sides with area, divide both sides with area, we can now find the value of the bar x. Now on the other hand, still in the same orientation, looking for the bar y. Okay, we have our bar y right here. Okay? So, y is from the center of gravity or from the centroid of our differential strip to the origin. 
So we now have y over 2. Why is it y over 2? Because as what we have noticed from our differential strip, the whole height is y. And since it is now in the center, so this is already y over 2. Okay? So we have our formula. The area times bar y is the integral of dA times y over 2. As you can see, this is still the area, this is still the y. Okay? y over 2 because we've noticed it is at the center of our differential sphere. Now, what is dA here? Notice dA is y times dx again. y times dx. Notice we have y over 2 right here. We could write 1 half outside. y times y, we could have y squared. And we have our dx. What is y squared? y is already our f of x. So this will be equivalent to f of x squared dx. Limits from x of 1 to x of 2. So we can solve for the abscissa and ordinate in our vertical strip. Okay? So we now have our two different formulas. Now if we look at here, we could have another orientation. We have the horizontal strip. Notice, we still have our differential strip right here. And it is now oriented horizontally. Okay? And we may have noticed that our centroid is still at the center of our differential strip. So we will be having another values of our x and y axis. Okay. Notice that if we have a horizontal uh, orientation, we would label this one as x. Remember? And we would label this one as dy. That is our differential area. Now, from the origin, or rather from the center of gravity to the origin, we will call this one as x over 2. Why is it x over 2? Notice we have a value of x. Okay, the whole length of our figure. Now, divided into 2, we now have our x, of two, x over 2. And what we have of our y, dili naman divide ng 2. From the center of gravity to the origin to here, we have what we call as y. Okay, please uh, observe the difference between the two orientation. Now let's try to find the bar x and the bar y. Uh, using again the formula, area times the bar x is the integral of dA. And this time, if we're talking about x, it is already x over 2. Notice here. So notice what is dA. dA is x times dy. x times dy times x over 2. We could write the one half outside the integral symbol. x times x, it will become x squared times dy. What is the value of x squared? Okay, so x is g of y. So we will be having g of y squared. Since this is x squared, dy limits from y1 to y to 1 half. And we now have the area times our bar x. To find the value of bar x, just divide both sides with area, divide both sides with area. Okay, moving on, we have also uh, the ordinate. So area times bar y is equivalent to the integral of dA times y. What is our dA again? We know that it is x times dy times y. This is no longer y over 2. Okay, notice, so y and bar y. Okay. So, if we multiply this one together, x, y, dy. Notice, the only variable that is uh, not common, y, dy, is, is the value of x. What is the value of x? That is equivalent to g, y. So, we now have our formula, y, g, y, dy. Then it's from y1 to y2. We now have area times bar y. To find the value of bar y, just divide both sides with the value of x. So we now have four different formulas depending upon the orientation of our differential strip. So all the formulas will be used in your preference because you could use this method, this method, and the other method uh, depending upon the problem and depending upon the mastery. Okay, so now let's apply to our examples. Stop the board. So let's try using the formulas that what we have discussed previously to our examples. Example number one, find the ordinate of the centroid. 
of the area under 1 R of uh, sine curve. Mm -hmm. Y is equal to sine X. So when we say ordinate, it is what? Bar Y. Okay. So 1 R. 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 Of a sine wave. R. 1 R of a sine wave. We have right here. This is 1 R. From 0 to pi. And when the value of x is pi over 2, sine 90 is 1. We have right here. Sine 0, 0. Sine 90 is 1. Sine 180 is 0. So this is 1 R. So we have y as sine x. So obviously, our differential strip is in vertical orientation. So just label this one. We have our y. We have our centroid. And since we are looking for the ordinate, we'll be having the half of the y over 2. Okay, so we could no longer find or label this one as x. So it depends upon the problem. So that you will have an easy process in uh, analyzing the situation. Okay, first we will apply this formula, right? Area times bar y is the integral of the dA times y over 2, since we're talking about ordinate. And luckily, we don't have the value of the area yet. So what shall we do? We will solve the area using our previous topic. So, balikon ang tanan na itong mga yung discuss. What is the area? That is the area, uh, the differential area times our and the graphs. We now have 0 to pi. 0 to pi. What is our differential area? y times dx. y times dx. What is the value of y? y is sine x dx. What is the integral of sine x dx? Negative cosine x. Our limits is 0 to pi. Substituting the limits, please observe cosine pi minus cosine 0. Upper minus lower. We still have our negative outside. Cosine 180, that is negative 1, minus sine 0, that is 1. Negative 1 and negative 1, negative 2 times negative, we have 2 square units. So we now already have the value of the area, which is 2 square units. Now let's try to solve the integral of dA times y over 2. What is dA? y dx. y times dx times y over 2. Notice, we could write the one half outside, y times y, we have y squared, and we have our dx, 0 to pi. What is y squared? That is sine x squared. Sine x squared. So, notice, this is uh, not applicable for what is since 0 to pi man, it's not pi over 2. So, what are we going to do? Uh, we will apply the, the method that what we have, cases, okay? What is the value of sine squared x? 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx. 1 half times 1 half, we will have 1 fourth. Distributing this one, 1 fourth dx minus... This is also 1 fourth. Ah, 1. You want 8 na now, that zone. This is 1 fourth cosine 2x. To have the, the derivative of 2x as 2 dx, I have correct this one already. That is why I wrote 1 eight times 4 times 2 again 4 times 2 it will become 8 so we now have 2 dx ready for integration integral of dx it will be x 0 to pi minus 1 8 integral of cosine theta d theta that is sine theta okay sine 2x limits from 0 to pi now substituting the limits limits upper 1 fourth pi minus 1 8 sine of pi 2 pi minus 1 8 sine of 2 times 0 sine 0 is 0 sine 2 pi is 360 2 pi is 360 sine 360 is 0 again so we now have 1 fourth pi we've known already the value of area which is 2 square units divide both sides with 2 divide both sides with 2 we now have the value of our y as pi over 8 units Okay, that is for example number one. Left, sir. Left, that's what I need. So this is pi over 2. Pila ng pi over 2, 3.1450 divided by 2. Di ka lang kasama.
two. Okay, so example number two. Determine the abscissa of the centroid of the area bounded by the parabola y squared is equal to 4x and the lines y is equal to 4 and x is equivalent to 0. I have already the figure. We have the parabola y squared is equal to 4x. This is the graph of that value. And we have a line y is equal to 4. This is y equals to 4. And x is equal to 0. So as notice, we have an area. Okay. We're asked to find the abscissa of the centroid. If you look at here, obviously we will be having a vertical orientation. Okay. Because we have upper curves and lower curves. The upper curve, line y is equal to 4. And the lower curve, we have y is equivalent to 2 squared of x, the square root of 4x, okay? So what shall we do first? Find the area. Okay, the area is the integral of y2 or dy times dx, right? But our y is composed of 2, y2 minus y1. y2 is equivalent to 4, y1 is 2 squared of x, okay? So substituting the, uh, the values of the curves, 4 minus 2 squared of x. Our limit will be from 0 up to 4. 0 to 4. Now, we've known already how to calculate. We have now the area of 16 over 3 square units. Okay, next. We now solve for the value of the centroid. Area times bar x is the integral of dA times x. This is the area and this is the x. Okay? So if we notice here, if we label this one, wala natunga ang x. Diba? Ang matunga yung ano yung magparot is ang y. So here, it is the value of x. Okay? What is dA? y times dx. So y times dx times another x, we now have three functions. Or we now have three values x, y, dx. Asa mi nalahe? Si y. So what is the value of y? Notice, this is y and we have two values of y. The 4 and the 2 squared of x. So upper minus lower again, y2 minus y1. We, now, we don't want to mess with x anymore and dx. What is y2? y2 is 4. Upper minus y1, the lower one is 2 squared of 3. Okay, we now have this value. Okay, all we need to do is distribute. Okay, just solve this and take it out. Okay, we've noticed already, we know how to solve this one. This will be distributed, 4x, this will be distributed, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. This will be distributed, 4x dx, this will be distributed, 2x raised to the power 3 halves dx. And we've known already the process, integrate, integrate. Until we have the value of 32 over 5 from this portion only. Okay. Notice we have solved already the value of the area in the first place. 16 over 3. 16 over 3 times the bar x is equivalent to 32 over 5. To find the value of bar x, all we need to do is divide both sides with 16 over 3. Divide both sides with 16 over 3. Cancel out. The value of bar x is 1.2 units. That is the abscissa. So from the origin to the center of gravity, it is 1.2. Now if you look at here, this is the whole area. Okay? We wish to find the center of this one. So 1 and the away the centroid. Okay? This will put ring apart the center no ni one man. So the region is must dapo dapo apart. Okay? So notice, but obviously, makit kanjo na to sa 1.2. Darang nang to, darang nang to. So obviously, that I did it. That is just only the abscissa na part. So ordinate, makit kanjo na to as a properly na butang. Okay, so let's try solving the ordinate of this example again. Okay, so since we're just looking for the abscissa right here, how about let's try to find the ordinate. Let's have this, the same example. And we're just going to find the ordinate. Now, 
If you look at here, this is the continuation. So we are now trying to find the ordinate or the bar y or the location or, or the exact location now of our central since we've already known that uh, the abscissa. Now let's try to find the ordinate. Notice from our previous example, I have changed the orientation from vertical, I have used horizontal. Because it will be easier for me, no longer have to divide this one into two. Diba? So notice, kung ahong i-find ka, hindi na ako mag-divide ito sa y. Kung ahong i-parog, mag-divide ito ko sa x, sa y. Kung ahong i-find ka, mag-divide ito ko sa x. Now notice, kung ahong nang i-find ka, hindi na ninaw na i-divide by 2. Since this is the orientation that we have. Okay, I will be looking for the bar y. We've known already the value of the area, which is 16 over 3 square units. We've solved this one already. Now let's use the formula area times bar y is dA times y. Okay, notice we have the same value. Integral limits from 0 to 4, 0 to 4. What is our dA? Just said the value x times dy, x times dy times the y outside. So what is x? Okay. So, from the formula that what we have right here, x is y squared over 4. Since this is the equation, y squared as 4x. Divide both sides with 4 over 4. We now have x as y squared over 4. So, this one is y squared over 4. We could write 1 fourth outside y squared times y. It will become y cubed. So, simple integration. Integral of y cubed dy, that is y to the fourth over 4. 1 fourth times 1 fourth, we now have 1 over 16. y to the fourth, limits from 0 to 4. Now substituting the limits, 4 raised to 4, that is 32. Times 2, 64. 64 divided by 16, so we have 16. Okay? We've known already the value of the area, 16 square units, 16 square, uh, 16 over 3 square units, 16 over 3. To find the bar y, divide both sides with 16 over 3, 16 divided by 16 over 3, bar y is 3 units. Now, we've known the location. Okay, notice that the center of gravity, from what we've known already, it is 1.2. Diba? 1.2 and 3. So, this is the location of the center of gravity or the centroid of our figure. Now, if you notice, sakto ba doon ang isang situation sa tunga. Why did I choose this orientation? How about, sir, solving this one in the same manner that what we've solved from the abscissa using a vertical orientation instead of horizontal orientation? Now, let's take Another solution for this one. Okay. We have right here. I have used the same orientation as I have used from the abscissa. Notice we have our vertical orientation. Our vertical strip. We have our y. Dividing it into 2, we have y over 2. Since I'm using bar y. y over 2. Now we have the same area since we and solve this area. Area 16 over 3 square units. Area times bar y is now the integral of dA times what I have right here. Nga naman eh. Nga nung y over 2 mo na sir, nga nung i-plus naman eh mag y1. Notice, kung y over 2 na po plus, wala pa ni si Jack kaabot sa origin. Di ba ako nag-discuss sa una? What would happen kung nga yung si Jack sa origin? So I will be using other methods or other ways in finding the exact value of the position of this one. What did I do? Why did I add y over a uh, y1? Notice, this is y2. Diba? From this point to the origin. From the lowest point to the origin, it is called y1. So I'm going to add the y over 2 plus y1 for us to determine the position of this centroid up to the origin. Padong jutatan ng sa origin. If you've noticed right here in this example, origin naman ni Dajon, di ba? From this point to the origin, it is called Y. Here to here, it is called Y. 
kay mudagan mas gabiha pa nun ito. Notice here, what's the abot sa origin? Y to run in kotob de real, a Y over 2. This is the whole Y, and this is Y over 2. What siya hinta po sa origin? So I have to find the value from this lowest point to the origin, which is Y1. So I have added Y1. What is Y2 again? Y, a uh, Y, it is Y2 minus Y1. So, notice we have right here the DA. What is DA? Y times DX, Y times DX. Y over 2 plus Y1. What is Y? Y2 minus Y1 times DX. Quantity. What is Y over 2? If I'm going to divide this one with 2, this is also divisible by 2. Which is Y2 over 2 minus Y1 over 2 plus Y1. Okay. Notice Y1 minus Y1 over 2 that is still Y2. Plus na lamang. 1 minus 1 half is still 1 half. Okay, so I have right here, let's write this one, y2, ang namilin, y2 over 2, ang resulta ni nila, y1 over 2. Or I could rewrite this one as, just over 2. Okay, notice, 1 half could be factored out, 1 half, 1 half. And what do we have right here? Kung na-factor out na na to, let's write 1 half here. y2 minus y1, y2 plus y1. In algebra, what is x minus y times x plus y sum and difference okay the sum and difference it is x squared minus y squared so right here i could just write y2 squared minus y1 squared dx so notice mas taas taas ang process kung aho ni si jangge pabaro now let's try to solve what is the value of y2 it is 2 the upper y2 is 4, y1 is 2 squared of x. Ipang square na to, 4 squared minus 2 squared of x squared. This will become 16, this will become 4x. Okay, we will now integrate the basic proper properties of integral and so on and so forth. And we would resolve to the value 16 again. Notice we have the value of area 16 over 3 times bar y is equivalent to 16 divide both sides with 16 over 3 16 over 3 canceling that one out 16 divided by 16 over 3 we now have the value of bar bar y as 3 units the same that what we have from the previous orientation okay so notice lisod lisod si dyan na pamaagi pero we would still have the same value than what we have right here so any question just another uh, just another method. As I have mentioned, mas tiro ninyo ang tanan process kay pwede man siya sa line-line na process. Natin dagang formula, pero you don't need to memorize the formula. All we need to do is just label and it will proceed later on. Okay? You will actually just uh, analyze what are the values that is to be divided by 2 or not to be divided by 2. 